party and your little dog too. Inspired by the success of their rival, the Walt Disney Company, Hollywood film studio MGM acquired the rights to the children's novel The Wonderful Wizard of Oz. Helmed by the prestigious director of Gone with the Wind, Victor Fleming, the colourful musical was also given a star-studded cast by the studio. The story follows a simple farm girl, her dog Toto and three friends acquired along the way on a journey into the heart of a sometimes magical, sometimes scary kingdom. Due to its mega budget, The Wizard of Oz lost money for the studio, but still received universal acclaim. Critics call the feature a much-loved homegrown fairy tale, and after being re-released in 1949, the picture finally started showing an enviable profit. There's no place like home. It's just a yellow brick. No, Belina, you don't understand. This was the yellow brick road. Five decades after it was first released, the Disney company produced an unofficial sequel to MGM's beloved classic. The outcome left audiences divided, with the complaint being that the storyline was too dark for children. Against a wicked queen and the dreaded Gnome King. You're in Oz. I'm Theodore the Good Witch. Where's your broom? You don't know much about witches, do you? As the 21st century gave rise to the fantasy film, Disney went back to the story of Oz for the second time. But this time around, they decided to add a substantial backstory to this newest property, explaining the origins of the main characters. This handling of the franchise was met with fierce enthusiasm from fans, and one of cinema's biggest fairy tales was thus introduced to a new generation for them to enjoy. Actually be a wizard. Yes, but they don't know that. And joining me now to discuss the enduring legacy of The Wizard of Oz is Alyssa Berger, an assistant professor of English at Culver Stockton College. Alyssa, thank you very much for joining us on Showcase. Oh, thank you for having me. Now, we know that The Wizard of Oz story has been around since the 1900s. Why do you think people keep on returning to this story time and time again and making new adaptations? Well, I think it's a combination of a couple of different things. One is the universality of the story. There are things in the story, the journey of self-discovery, friendship, um, questioning power that continue to resonate. They're universal. They're important everywhere to everybody. The book was written in 1900. The first movie adaptation was in 1939. And the most recent one was in 2013. How has the story adapted and changed with the different times? Well, I think there's some really important themes that continue to resonate. One is that idea of home that's changed really dramatically from Baum's original through the different adaptations. So, of course, in Baum's um, children's book, Dorothy goes on this grand adventure. She comes back. She says, there's no place like home. She's so happy to be back on the farm with Aunt Em and Uncle Henry. Um, but that doesn't really ring true with a lot of contemporary readers to leave and find this new magical place and discover your own strength and then go back and be what you always were before. And Salman Rushdie wrote a really great um, brief little British Film Institute classics uh, book on The Wizard of Oz. And he um, noted that one of the things about home is that it's not so much anymore that there's no place like home. Um, and this is a, a close paraphrase. It might even be a quote from Rushdie, but that there's no place as home, that we all sort of set out and we make our home where we find it, that there's really no way that we can go home. Um, and another big one is gender. Um, with Baum's original and then the 1939 film, we have good witches and bad witches. There are good girls and there are bad girls, and you're one or the other. Um, and the good ones win and the bad ones must be destroyed. But then in more contemporary adaptations, um, like Gregory Maguire's novel Wicked, Stephen Schwartz's musical adaptation of Wicked, the sci-fi original uh, miniseries Tin Man, we have much more complex negotiations of gender where it's not good girls and bad girls. It's girls and women who have these really rich, really complex backstories who find strength in their relationships with one another rather than being pitted against each other. And that's definitely another one of those really dynamic themes that's changed 
in a lot of exciting and interesting ways from 1900 to the present. And you touched on Wicked, and I wanted to talk a little bit more about how the stage show really offers a different perspective on the story that we all know. You know mega musicals tap into emotion. You, you get a different feeling, a different sense of a character and their desire when they sing one of these big show-stopping numbers as opposed to reading um, even a really rich, really fantastic description in a textual version. Uh, music sort of taps into that auditory experience and with the musical, the visual experience, the performance, the acting, it all just sort of gets wrapped up in that mega musical extravaganza that tells the story in a really energetic um, and really emotionally engaging way. I totally agree. Everything is slightly better with music. Alyssa Berger, thank <laughs> you very much for joining us on Showcase. Thank you very much.